with my lamp. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it looks I like you're burning the setting in your bedroom. Are we live? Is he, is well, is this better? Can, my, can you see my messy room? No, no we can see. It looks pretty cool. It does, actually. Oh, like nice. the sun shining right. only on you. <laughs> yeah, trying to, try to build my brand a little more. Yeah. Next time we should do that. Oh, you got to put you got to put tape over Dan Henry's name. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't promote him. No free. No free No free ride. I didn't even when he buys the whiskey, we can all wear his shirts. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Okay, guys, we're live. Um, listen, everybody, welcome to uh, Whiskey Thursday, where um, we try and get our guests drunks to steal their secrets. That's our new tagline. Uh, and um, we have tonight uh, superstar Aaron Harris, uh, who is uh, a, a ninja, a generating leads for real estate agents. And he's been working in this niche for a long time uh, and is uh, directly responsible for generating leads and converting leads and producing over $25 million in uh, volume for his clients. And uh, we are super, super pumped to have him here tonight. Uh, we've already, uh, you know, we've been, uh, uh, we made sure that he'd been drinking uh, his gin for uh, the past couple hours. So that he comes in, comes in here uh, nice and prepped for this. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, so Aaron's uh, got the gin out. I'm pretty sure um, uh, the rest of us are drinking uh, whiskey. What do we got going on there, Matt? What do wow. we got? <laughs> <laughs> Austin, what, what, what's wrong? Good. This is a sad day for me, and so oh, I would no. never, I would never, I would never do this uh, by <laughs> choice. But I'm actually, I'm drinking tea tonight, guys. Oh, oh man. I know, I know. Maybe I'm banned from life. I just had a dry throat tonight, and I got a bachelor party this weekend. Not mine, but I got a bachelor party this weekend, so I'm trying to like, you conserve. know, conserve it a little bit. You know, I don't want to be worn out for uh, before this weekend. So it's tea for me. Trying to get all the. Uh, Resveratrol, right? The, <laughs> there you go. Whatever it is. <laughs> Something like that. Well, I, well, I picked this up today. So. Oh, what is that? Can what I is that? that? Where, where is the rest of it? It's, that's uh, yeah. That's what that's what came with this giant bottle. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. What is the, what's the cheap Canadian stuff called? It's like Canadian something. It's like oh, really Canada cheap, house? like five bucks. What's it called? The Canada House. There, can you? Well, the Black Canadian Velvet Club is the rye. Isn't uh. Black Velvet, the Canadian whiskey. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't, I, don't, I only drink whiskey for this show. <laughs> <That's Yeah. brilliant. laughs> like I, I really, really try hard here, yeah. you know. And I've got this. Yeah. Giant yeah. Hey, but I think of a year from now, we're we're all gonna be pros at this stuff. Yeah. You know? There you go. <laughs> yeah, our whiskeys are gonna get a little bit more sophisticated. Okay, I'm actually gonna on. have hair on my chest. I mean, like <laughs> this will be, we'll be able to do a time lapse this time next year. We'll be able to see hair there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's been fun. Um, so and he's not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, good stuff. Hey, listen, Aaron, you know, uh, thanks a lot for popping on this. We're, uh, like I said, we're super happy to have you. Um, I know that I've been following you for a long time. You are part of Dan Henry's group, uh, the Dan Henry 10K Club, which is really cool. And in fact, I think you started this uh, long before I did. Um, and, um, and, and I've been following your progress and just uh, seeing what you're doing. And I think you're doing some really cool stuff. And I think we're going to go, we're going to get into some of the stuff that you're doing, how you're working with your clients, how your clients are performing, how they're getting results. And also, um, later on, we're going to get into some of the, uh, campaigns, which I think you're, you're kind of one of the only guys that I know that's running, uh, these types of campaigns on a regular basis with your clients. Um, and the other thing too, is that, uh, just for everybody else out there, um, Aaron was actually my first, uh, the first time I had ever paid for a coaching call was with Aaron. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, hey, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'll tell you, you know, I got a ton of value from, from, you know, sitting down with you for, an hour, I uh, learned a lot. There was a couple things that you were doing that were really unique um, and I uh, uh, really enjoyed our call. Uh, so, but, so yeah, let's, uh, let's hop right in there. there. Before yeah. we jump in though, if you guys are watching live, hashtag live down in the comments below. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay down in the comments below. And if you have a question, make sure to ask it so that we can make sure Aaron answers it. Cause That's he's right. giving really secrets away, you guys. Yeah. yeah, and this is an awesome opportunity here to you know, you got Aaron here, uh, an, an expert in the space. If you have any questions whatsoever, well, and that's just it. You know, we're no. talking about paying for a coaching call from someone. 
Like you have somebody who's drinking, willing to give you all their secrets right now. <laughs> all like, my funnels. Ask the secrets. You can have them. <laughs> ask the secrets. Yeah, there we go. We got share funnels already. See? Boom. Awesome. So, Aaron, why don't you um, paint the picture for us as to I don't like. We, let's get into like where you kind of started after, but t just really quickly, tell us where you're at right now. Like what? What are you doing? How many customers are you working with? What do you like? What are you seeing uh, right now? And uh, and just tell us a little bit about where you're at in your business. Right, right. So right now, um, handling about twelve to fifteen of my own customers any given month, and then another about ten uh, for white labels, just for other agencies and other marketers. Nice, very nice. Good, good, good. So and and so, tell us a little bit about you know how you got into this. What, what's your background in like before you you know got into digital marketing and and why'd you pick the real estate niche? <laughs> right, right. So like a lot of people, the real estate niche kind of picked me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, I graduated in 2014 with actually a bachelor's degree in marketing. And so had that and you know, all excited and was ready to start, you know, doing marketing for companies. About a year, year later, realized that, you know, it's a valuable skill set and that, uh, you know, I can make a lot more money doing it on my own. And so like most people, when they get started, when we're doing a little bit of content, we were doing websites, you know, kind of the basics. And then uh, just kind of stumbled around. We were doing a lot of content for a lot of real estate agents mm -hmm. and uh, fell into Facebook ads. They stopped showing content and couldn't really get views. And we started doing ads and started getting results. And from there, we just took it and ran with it. Awesome. And out of those, uh, you said 12, 13, 12, 15, out of those clients, are they all real estate agents? They are all real estate agents. Yeah, because you're all your white right? well. Say again? You said you're exclusive to real estate? Uh, probably ninety percent. I got a Cairo, got a wedding photographer, but and then okay, also Cairo. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> you guys, if you're watching, make sure to put uh, what you're working with below. Are you working with just real estate agents? Or are you working with a bunch of different stuff? Tell us who you're working with and what you're working with. List of all your clients' names, their pa <laughs> link their pages. If you want to see it all, put it in the oh, comments. <laughs> <laughs> How much you're charging so we can undercut them? No. <laughs> There's Austin stealing Austin's giving away secret. his secrets right now. <laughs> oh, no. Come on. I will not undercut it. I do not win your clients. <laughs> you have enough problems, Austin? Enough. Yeah, <laughs> enough. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so that's that's great. And that's kind of the, the backstory on it. So I guess what are some of the things that you've learned along the way that have kind of set you apart to the point where you have 12 to 15 clients and you're not, you know, struggling two years later? So, uh, I mean, when you kind of getting started, you know, like a lot of us, you first you got to figure out how to get the results, which is what a lot of people struggle with. But that's the first thing you get. And then once you're getting the results, you realize, oh, I can get a ton of leads now trying to figure out how we can get uh, get those conversions up. And, you know, most people learn real quick that most agents suck at, uh, at, that, at that portion of it. So then we had to figure that piece out. And then once you figure out how to generate the leads and you figure out how to get those leads to convert, now you got to figure out how to get more clients. So just kind of uh, just been piecing it all together as we're going and been rocking and rolling with it. Yeah, and I think that's kind of a uh, you know it's interesting because I, I'm pretty sure that when you started in this, there was like there were no courses out there. Like nobody else was doing this kind of stuff, or at least being open about it. Um, and so a lot of what you did and learned, you did that all on your own. Man, we we learned the hard way. I've been, yeah. been fired so many times. <laughs> I was getting fired left and right, you know, and it wasn't because I wasn't delivering the leads. You know, we figured that out pretty quickly. Start we were from getting, the bottom. That's from right. the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, because it, it is tough, and and I think fortunately now for a lot like new marketers that are getting into this, there's a lot of resources out there available. Um, you know, a lot of us have you know programs, courses. There's coaching. Uh, you know, I know you've got a little thing going on um, with your 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 targeting hacks. Um, you know, I've got something going on. A lot of other people, you know, have things. So now people, you, you can actually figure out how to do this, but that only gets you so far. Right, right. right. I mean, this is sort of the second step um, to what you've figured out and that what, you know, I think new marketers now or people that have been in this are looking to do. Definitely. Which is converting those leads. That's what I was say. He said you know, he got it figured out how to get the leads, but then the next challenge was converting them. So I, I'd love to hear how you tackled that one because that is that is the challenge that most agents face. Is you know their training is how to get a real estate license, how not to get sued. It's not on how to convert leads. Certainly, certainly. So I think, like I said, when, when we were starting, we were just generating the leads. So I would give an agent hundred leads. I give ten agents hundred leads and. 
two out of the ten would actually get some deals from her. The other ten would tell me it sucks, and you know I would likely get fired. And so I, I <laughs> so I started following the, the other two, <laughs> right? And that just kept happening, you know, for a couple months. So at first I was blaming the agents. You know, you can blame them all day, but you want to get keep getting paid, so you got to figure out how to solve the problems. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to the two out of 10, the 20% who were actually converting these leads and figuring out what they were doing different from the rest of the agents. And so once we saw what that was, and it really just came down to a follow up, follow up process. You know, they, they had their, their uh, personal assistants calling the leads within you know, five, 10 minutes of them calling in. They were calling each lead five, six, seven times. They were texting the lead. They were emailing the lead. And so once we realized that, okay, this is working for these, the 20% of agents, let's figure out how to take this and scale it to the other 80%. Awesome. Awesome. And so the biggest thing was that they were contacting all the leads that they were getting. Exactly. <laughs> it, they were, it, it they're seems, actually picking up the phone, right? And that's it. They picked the phone up and they made it happen. Absolutely. Wow. And that's, you know, it's funny because I, uh, in, I help coach real estate agents on, you know, how to get deals and convert deals and all that stuff. And it's so often that we'll talk to them. And as a real estate agent, like you're so focused on what do I need to do to get leads? But there's not a lot of like, what do I need to do to convert the leads I'm getting? Exactly, exactly. And so, so one, of, one of the things we started doing, though, um, so instead of just sending them the leads initially, just name, email, and phone number, one mm -hmm. of the things we started adding, which, uh, you know, any newbies out there, I definitely suggest you doing to do this, is uh, pretty much include another fill of data. Just find out how soon that lead is looking to, to, to purchase. So whether that's one to three months, whether that's six, you know, four to six months, whether that's a year out. So at least with that one uh, additional field of data, the agent can then spend more time calling those leads specifically. And yeah. So, and are you seeing a, a, a change in the cost per lead when you do that? Because I think a lot of people are afraid to add more fields because they don't want to lose their cost per lead. I mean, it's, we're getting leads 50 cent, a dollar, two, three dollars, even adding that additional field. So, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt your cost per lead at all. And if it does, we're talking talking pennies. So, I mean, it's definitely worth it. And it's, you know, saying having your agents who are calling, it just makes them feel more confident when they're making those making those calls. Makes sense. That's awesome. What do you, how do you tell, uh, just real quick, how, how do you tell your agents to approach the leads that maybe said they're not looking to move soon or that they're, they're just looking around, right? What, how do, what do you tell your agents? Call them anyway? Uh, definitely. I tell them always call them anyway. Um, even what, even before you even sign them, we're pre-framing them ahead of time that, you know, this is, this is a numbers game. We're going to add, a, you know, hundreds of leads to your database. And so once, once you've exhausted your, your, your sphere, your network of, you know, your referrals and everything else you're doing, you're going to have that database full that way three months from now, you're still eating. And then this is a never ending pipeline of converting leads. I mean, every probably at least once or twice a month, I'll get a client saying that, you know, that lead from six months ago or from that first campaign, we had two or three leads convert this month from it. And yeah. so now been doing this long enough, I actually can see like, you know, it's kind of hard to believe like, oh, six months from now, they're not going to call you. But, you know, we've doing it long enough to realize that they, they really do, especially if you have them in your CRM and you're touching base with them. Makes sense. Makes sense. So you're getting leads that are six months previous that are actually starting to convert. Exactly. So, what are you giving as far as expectations to the agents you're working with when you sign them on as a client? Certainly, certainly. So I tell them right from the gate, uh, you know, Facebook, Instagram ads, they're not, you know, they're not, they're not magic. Your mm -hmm. online, uh, your online lead conversion rate is only a one to 3%. And that's whether it's from Facebook, whether it's from Google, whether it's from Instagram. But what we can do is, you know, we can generate those leads for you. And now we actually have upgraded to an ISA for uh, all our leads. And so doing that, we've actually got that conversion rate to about a five or six percent on average. And so when I'm bringing them on, I'm telling them right away that you know we're going to give you 100 leads, and all these leads won't be ready. But what we can do is get you, you know, probably about a 25 percent or 70 70 percent response rate, usually about a 20 to 30 percent of I don't know connection rate, appointment rate, and then usually about a five to six percent conversion rate over your next 45 days. And so letting them know, you know, real estate has really long sales cycles. So, you know, one, one month together, we're not going to get anything done. Even if you got a hot lead, you're not getting to the closing table. And so, you know, we're breaking it down like that. And, you know, you're talking their language that they, they get it and they're willing to give you a shot. And so I just tell them, you know, give me three months for best results. And then we can kind of go from there. Makes sense. Makes sense. So you're setting really strict expectations on what they can expect so that you're not getting people canceling in that first 30, 60, 90 days because they know this is a long term game. Exactly. And as soon as we get on the phone with a new client, we're setting those expectations right out the gate. Makes sense. Cool. Hey, a couple shout outs here. Um, Doug, how's it going? Tawa is on. Bell, Bell is here. Ty's here. Uh, we got a couple. Elijah is here. What's going on, Elijah? Where do you see Elijah? I see Elijah. I tell him in the, he's watching. <laughs> okay. 
Oh yeah, there's a bunch of people. All right, Ruben, uh, Seven, uh, Matthew. How's it going, guys? Thanks for tuning in. Um, we got a question here. Um, let me see here. I think there was a question. Uh, yeah. And anybody who does have questions, make sure to leave them below in the comments so that we can answer those. Uh, if you have any questions, like this is a great opportunity for you to get uh, pretty close to a coaching call without paying any money for it, right? <laughs> so you're able to find out from people who are actually doing right. that. Uh, what the answers are to your questions. So ask those questions below. Also, if you're watching live, hashtag live in the comments, hashtag replay if you're watching the replay. And Shane? So, yeah, Doug's asking, uh, what do you mean by increasing the cost by adding the extra fields to the lead forms? So I'm, I'm, are you still, so what are you using, lead forms or landing pages, first of all? And so, then, so right now we're probably doing about 70% lead forms, 30% landing pages. So we okay. did a lot of landing pages uh, to start with. I still got a few uh, clients that are you know, still killing it with killing it with the landing pages. So, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But uh, right now we're kind of pushing more towards lead forms right now, just because you can set them up pretty quick, you know, time saving for me and, you know, still getting the same kind of results. Right. And so uh, can you answer that, that question about the, you know, possibility of, leads increasing in cost when you're adding the additional fields to um, to your, I guess, to your lead forms? Certainly, certainly. So kind of uh, typically, you know, the thought is to, to get the, the lowest cost per lead, getting as important information, but as little data as possible. So that typically that's name, email address, and phone number in real estate. And so we're just adding an additional field, uh, just saying, how soon are you looking to move? And so you, depending on your market, you know, that your, your lead cost may be, you know, say $5 on average, it might be five and a quarter, you know, so it's, you're, not, it's, you're not seeing a big increase, not, not a big increase at all. Yeah. And, and adding that additional field to the lead form is uh, adding a lot more value for, for yeah. the agents. Yeah. Right. Especially because now you can score them or segment them properly and then exactly. people can focus on those leads. So if you got a lead that says, you know, are you looking to move in the lead answers immediately, then your agent may be more likely to, and it's not just, I think it's perception as well, right? That, like, that's all it is. I was yeah. actually, I was talking to a few agents. And so before we were adding that, you know, you would get 10 leads and let's say the first five, you know, aren't really interested right now. Let's say the next two is in a bad number because they're just, you know, tire kickers and lead nine and 10 are hot and ready to go. Well, after they waste the time on the first seven or eight leads, now they're discouraged. Now they don't want to pick the phone up. Now they don't want to keep calling because they already have a pre a perceived notation of what they think this lead is going to be. And right. so just adding that one to three months just tells the agent, hey, this person really wants to talk to you and they're ready to make moves pretty soon. And so it just helps them from a confidence level. Well, can we address the fact that what we're talking about here is that you're going to have 95 to 97% of your leads are not going to be buyers. They're not going to be ready to go. Right. Like we're talking about three to 5%, you know, that's a huge number, and a lot of agents get discouraged when they they start talking to you know seventy five people that are not ready. And I always say, you know, this is a numbers game. And the truth is, we can get three hundred non buyers, and mm -hmm. then suddenly get fifteen buyers. Right. Right. We don't know where that number average is going to average out. If it's month one, or if it's month two, we could have a really heavy month one, and we could have a you know desolate month two, three, and four. We don't know. It's a long term average. I mean, is that what you're seeing with your clients as well? That's exactly what I'm seeing. And so every now and then we'll get lucky and, you know, the first 10 lead, leads come in or you get one or two or who are hot and ready to go. Other times, you know, it's lead 101, it's lead 99. And so, like I said, just adding that additional field of data sometimes just helps them segment that just a little bit better. Exactly. No, that's awesome. Because then they can focus on the ones. Well, I shouldn't say they can focus on the ones because they should be calling all of them, right? They but, should be calling all of them, but, right. you know. They're not going to do it, then they can at least call the ones who are ready right now. Exactly. The ones who say ASAP as their time frame, make sure they get their phone blown up. <laughs> you know, one thing, one thing I noticed, too, we were, we were doing some long-form um, ads as well for real estate, and uh, we are just testing out some stuff. And what I noticed, like, we were asking all kinds of questions, and the leads were expensive, but, man, the agent was excited to find out that they got – you know, four or five leads that were owners. They got information about credit scores. They got information about when they were moving, uh, whether they were, you know, like I said, renters or owners. Uh, it, you know, just that it's, again, I think it just goes back to the perception. It's like, wow, okay, these are real. So these, these people are actually looking to move, you know, not in six months, but immediately, right? So uh, it, it, not just focusing on those specific leads, but just, you know, creating that excitement for your agent to know that there are some leads in this that are looking to move at some point in time, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's funny, we have uh, Elijah watching, 
who was one of the ISAs of the team I was on previously. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yep. You, so, right. Elijah, you invite him in here. <laughs> I well, invite him into the the B Live or invite him into and into this group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I did. I invited him. I'm like, dude, you gotta check this out. That's so, awesome. Um, <laughs> no, we do have a question though from Regina. She said, "When is the best time to run ads?" Which is a great question. Are you running twenty four seven ads, or are you running uh, lifetime with uh, hourlies? So we've done both. I've had some agents who say specifically, you know, I don't want any lead at the eight o'clock because I can't call them. But mm -hmm. so right now, for all our clients uh, that we have and all the clients we have going forward, we have an ISA team that's twenty four seven. And okay. so with that being said, we do all our you know, we have, we run ads twenty four seven. And so what what I have found is that probably almost almost half, probably about fifty percent of the leads that are coming in are coming in you know after five o'clock. After the lead is made at home, after they're sitting down, they've had dinner with their family, they did homework with the kids or whatever, whatever it is they're doing, whatever their lifestyle looks like, after five or six o'clock, that's when most of the leads are coming in. And so right. with that being said, we don't tend to shut our ads off just because, you know, eight, nine, 10, 12 o'clock, we got leads flowing in. And so, you know, it's a numbers game and we want those numbers to keep coming. Absolutely. And you, so you have an ISA team. Is that an in-house ISA team? Are you outsourcing that or? So we're outsourcing it right now. Uh, we're we're exploring and doing in house, but uh, right now we're out. We are outsourcing it. Okay, makes sense. And do you use a company or a virtual assistant that you've uh, personally gone out and found? So right now I'm using the company. Um, explored the the virtual assistants, but the training part was a little bit more than I was looking to do. Right. Um. So for anybody who else is who anybody who's thinking it, it definitely is a huge value for the clients. But you know, it also can get kind of costly and add another step to you know to your process. So if you're not doing this at a high volume, I definitely don't recommend getting into that right away. Right. But uh, if, if that is something that you can do, then, like I said, there's a ton, ton of companies out there you can research, you can train, you know, virtual assistants, you can even do it in-house, kind of like Shane. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a lot of different options. <laughs> don't do it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What did you say, Shane? I said, don't do it like me. You won't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Drew says, what is an ISA? Yep. Great question, Drew. An ISA is an inside sales agent. So somebody who's going to respond to those leads when they come in. Uh, make phone calls, text, emails, whatever is necessary, and not completely automated. So that's what an ISA is. Um, and if you guys are watching live, be sure to hashtag live in the comments below. If you're watching replay, make sure to replay in the comments. Okay, get below. some value, guys. Hit yeah. Those, hit those like buttons. Yeah, hit the like <laughs> button. <laughs> get some engagement, guys, going. Every time you hit the like button, you know what happens. Austin has to do a shot. Ah, shot. Yeah, shot. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna, have, he's, gonna, he's gonna have to go to the bathroom all the time. We, all, we, all need we haven't taken oh, one. Right, we're drinking. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's him, man. All right. Let's make. We can make Aaron take a shot, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, well, now game. like tea, ginger shots, like that's what's in now. Alcohol is so like, man. That's like seventies. <laughs> that's that's, that's no, new age stuff. I don't know. It's whatever. It's what old people do. But yeah, our generation, it's all about the ginger shots. The green shots, tea shots. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna live forever, man. Matthew I'm Connors is guys. here. What's going on, Matt? Drew's here. Doug's here. What's going on, guys? Um, Drew says, "I hate click funnels. What other landing pages can we use that have good integrations to track leads, funnel, and get alerts?" Are so, you using click funnels or are you using something else? So I use click funnels as well as Unbounce and lead forms, but I still have several um, several campaigns that are actively actively running right now with Unbounce. Okay. And have you seen a difference between which landing page software you're using and the conversion rate or the quality of the lead or even the cost of the lead? Honestly, it's, it's all about the same. Once they get to that point, they're, they're, they're converting anyway, depending on what their offer is. And so honestly, I started with Unbounce before I had ClickFunnels. I use ClickFunnels a lot more for my personal business, but every now and then I use it for a client, just depending on you know what the funnel is. But okay. um, So if you're looking, if you're looking for alternative, Unbounce is good. Uh, lead pages is also good. I think both of those are a lot less buggy than ClickFunnels is. Mm -hmm. I found ClickFunnels that had the most bugs in my personal opinion, but you know, still great software. Makes sense, makes sense. So you said you're using uh, ClickFunnels in your own. Um, what are you doing for client acquisition? Are you using ClickFunnels or, or what is the client acquisition strategy that you found most effective? So the one that I found most effective right now is LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. But um, from client acquisition, we've done f free methods, we've done paid methods, and so just a few few nuggets for you know anybody just getting started. Uh, if you don't you know don't have a budget or a big budget, um, I got one of my first clients from Open House Walk-In, 
Mm-hmm. Most agents in your in your market are doing open houses every you know every Sunday two to four is typically the time. And people you know, to do go to the open houses, man. Those go, guys. Oh yeah. To people go go to open house and now talk to some people. Um, also, you know, another free free method is you know just add a ton of realtors on Facebook and you know, post some good content and you know, you'll have some reach out to you. Uh, what else? What else? What else? <laughs> I got I got to mention stuff. So how many how many new clients did you get, Austin, from that last post that you put up? Uh. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, and that and that's what like that's what you're talking about, Aaron, right? Like post, yeah. like basically on Facebook, you're posting your Dude, results. Your- yeah, that's the number one thing. Sorry, my my thing my audio or sound is like off a little bit. You guys yeah, are cutting out. You sound fine. No worries, no worries. So you're doing but a yeah, lot with LinkedIn. Absolutely, I agree with with uh, Aaron, man. So a couple other strategies that we've used, uh, one that uh, is probably my personal favorite, especially in your local market, you know, once you exhaust it, it doesn't work as well. But, uh, you know, get, get, get in with a local agent and then just see about sponsoring an event. We sponsored a few luncheons. You'll get two or three clients from it. And you also get an opportunity to get in front of the whole brokerage. And so we've actually got some brokerage deals that way. That's awesome. And so you, usually you'll buy lunch for, you know, 20, 30 agents, you know, depending on what, you know, which area is 10, $15 a person, then, you know, give you a chance to speak in front of 20, 30, 40 agents. Oh yeah. So we we've awesome. got a ton of clients that way, and then uh, the one that we're us- utilizing right now the most and probably getting the most success is just LinkedIn. You know, their their, their title is there. You can search them by company. You can search them by you know market or geographic area, and give them some good value, and you know they'll they'll jump on a call with you. Are you automating all that? Oh, that's all automated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? I'm just curious, like uh, just for myself, what do you autom- What what are you using to automate it? Uh, I use JetBus. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's. Whatever, every, that's what everybody's telling me to use. So, yeah, yeah. Very I think cool. the last one that's uh, not getting uh, booted right now. <laughs> Jeff oh, is, that, is that happening now with LinkedIn? Yeah, people are, are getting caught using automation with stuff. So I think that's uh, the one that's uh, making a difference right now. Yeah, um, and I think if you're going to want to be doing that, you're going to be you're going to want to do that pretty soon because I think they're going to like at some point in time. That's not going to last forever. Yeah, no, 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 nothing does. So we just get in where I saw it. Yeah, exactly. Once people right. start getting annoying and off the platform and, you know. <laughs> yeah, then you're going to have to go on Upwork and find somebody who knows how to write the code to, to just make you something specific, you know, mm-hmm. and you'll spend a few hundred bucks doing that. I found agents of Upwork too. So, you know, if you if you can still get on Upwork, <laughs> I know they, they stopped letting a lot of uh, agencies on there, but I am still on there. So if you are on there, look for agents, look for loan officers. They're there too. Hey, let me, uh, let me ask you, Aaron, how, how did you pick up your first client, like your first, first client? What did you do to get that client? So, and what did you charge them? <laughs> so I actually have a little bit of an unfair advantage. So my stepmom actually is a Remax agent. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so I just said, hey, stepmom, I run ads. Let me run an ad for you. And she said, okay. <laughs> but so not, count, so not count her, though, actually. Uh, we, My mother and uh, my father, they, they sold a house. And so the agent that was there, he was showing us the new house. And he was just like, oh, yeah, what's this Facebook thing? And. I pitched him on, you know, let me, you know, do something for him. And so, you know, talk to your local realtor, figure out who sold a house to you, to yourself, to your parents, to anybody, you know, and you know, they, they'll put a good word for you and, you know, charge and then, a couple hundred bucks. And I think that's, that's great. You should yeah. always, before cold calling any other outbound, you should always exploit your family and friends first. I think that's a really great example. <laughs> I like how you use the but word. You know, and, that, and that's not, actually, that's not a bad thing. You know, and, and I think you're, it, you don't need to exploit anybody. <laughs> <laughs> No, but he's right, right? (laughs) Because the the whole point is, like, if they just bought a house with an agent, um, you know, that agent has some loyalty to them. They have some loyalty to the agent. Like, it's a great in with the agent if you know somebody who's recently bought a house. And the other thing that you mentioned is paying for luncheons. I mean, that's great, you know, because uh, as a real estate agent myself, I can tell you most of the time our office is only booked out one, maybe two months. And there's plenty of months where all of a sudden, like, they realize they don't have anybody booked and they got to find somebody to come in and pay for the lunch, right? Because they want the lunch because that's what brings all the agents to the team meeting. As funny as that sounds, it's true, yeah, right? It's if true. there's no lunch, the agents don't come to the team meeting. They so they want a lunch. And, and agents uh, training. Exactly, right? Agents Especially if it's something that's going to make a difference, they like training. Yeah. Um, yeah, if it's legal, well, <laughs> good luck getting there. <laughs> but, just, uh, I, sorry, I just want to touch back on this, like going, like how you went to your your stepmom and all this stuff. Um, and this is exactly the same way I got started. And and you may have had sort of an in, 
or you may think you you would have had an unfair advantage because your stepmom. But I think the point is that you went out to your existing network, right? And and your stepmom just happened to be real estate agent. But there's a lot. You have a lot of friends and a lot of other people in your network that you may not know that those people may know agents and reaching out to those people before you do anything else is really important. That's how I ended up getting my first client mm -hmm. is I just br I just went into my database and looked at everybody that I knew. And then I just started emailing people telling them, Hey, I'm starting up this new business. And if you guys, if anybody knows an agent, um, a real estate agent, cause this is what I'm focusing on, uh, let me know. And, or could you recommend somebody? And that was a really, really easy end because when you once you have that referral, then it's easy to just call the agent up and then just say, hey, listen, so-and-so, you know, Bob uh, recommended that I call you. He thinks that you might be interested in doing something like this. And it's the, that's the easiest way to get a client and to get started in this business is reaching out. De Absolutely. De definitely, definitely. And if you don't have your first client, you know, just put a simple post on Facebook, say, hey, anybody, can, can anybody recommend a real estate agent? All your friends and family will quickly tell you, oh, here, call Johnny, call Bob. And yeah. then at that point, you can make a connection and tell you that, you know, someone so and so referred me and said that, you know, you were a great agent and give him your pitch. I mean, yeah, if, if it's, it's not too hard to get your first client at that point. Do good by them, you know, and then you can scale from there. Yeah. And I, and I think the important part, too, is the fact that it has now become a referral. So you can refer back to the person that actually mentioned their name when you contact that agent. And, exactly. and that, that makes a huge, huge difference because then they'll listen to you and you don't have to pitch them. Right. So what I used to do is I used to call like I, there was this one agent and the way I got him was basically I, I, I got the referral. I called them up. I said, listen, I'm really interested in the real estate in industry. Can I buy you a coffee? And I just want to talk about it a little bit. And he's like, yeah, for sure. Because agents want to talk to people that are interested in the real estate industry because they think they can. Um, recruit them <laughs> right true so, yeah. it's, it's, well you gotta look at yeah. how many of the agencies out there or the brokerages out there um they make money off people that they recruit to the to the brokerage you know Absolutely. i think so just throw a little bit of interest right Keller williams like all of those yeah and yeah. i think there's a lot of smaller ones that are coming up now that are doing the same thing for yeah, sure so, so it's easy to get a get a meeting with an agent um okay we got a bunch of questions in here so i'm going to start reading through these Alrighty. Matthew Connor awesome. says, "Using bots to qualify pushing to sheets with Zap?" Question mark. So I actually do not use bots, um, especially since we brought on the ISA and we're we're calling, we're texting, we're emailing, and we know it's getting handled. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people who are killing it with bots, so nothing against bots. That's just not something that we use for our agency. Makes sense. Makes sense. I like that. Stick and a couple of people have asked, uh, "What software was it?" It was JetBuzz. Is that right? That is correct. JetBuzz. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Alex says, I'm listening now about the first client. <laughs> now, everybody wants to get their first client. I completely can relate to that. I remember that. Yeah, that first, that first client is what's going to change everything for you, right? That's that going to change your life. With results and is going to, and that's what, that, like, you should be focusing on, on just that, trying to get that first client, right? The, the thing is, is I think a lot of people are relying on um, doing this like automation either through LinkedIn or they're doing cold emails and stuff like that. Man, you want to get a client, get out of your house and go start talking to people. That's like, it. Get out the house, go down the street, go to your local business network, go to the office, sponsor a luncheon, go to an open house, get seen, yeah. shake a hand, smile at them. You'll get one. Yep. And, and, uh, <laughs> in, in Jeff Miller's uh, words, get within choking distance. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so we got one more question though. Um, or I guess it's not really a question. He says, people getting loose around the booze, keep giving us the good good. So <laughs> <laughs> if, if you guys are enjoying this, if you're having fun, let's see hashtag keep drinking <laughs> in the comments. Um, uh, guys. Well, well, we'll that CRM does lead gen. How do we overcome this? Say again? Some agents say their CRM does their lead gen. How do we overcome this? And uh, Gustavo, I'd love to know a little bit more about that question because I have a feeling wow. it has to do with something like Boomtown or, or different CRM where they offer yeah. Facebook management. So one of the things that I tell my clients, I'm not here to replace anything you're currently doing. You know, if you're using Boomtown and you're having a great job, keep doing it. If you're using Zillow and they're killing it for you, keep doing it. What I'm here to do is enhance your business. So if you did 10 million last year, I want to help you do 20. 
And so I'm not trying to, I don't go pitching or discredit any other company unless we get on the call and they, they're discredited. They said they hate Zillow. I hate Zillow That's too. Good. They love Zillow. I love them too. You know, so just, you, know you, can, <laughs> like you, you can fill out, you can fill out your clients. But with that being said, figure out what their pain points are, figure out what their goals are. And so once you identify those goals, then you can, figure, you can let them know how your service is going to help them reach those goals. And that, that's the key, I think, right? That's a good point. Yeah. That's good. We're talking about helping people. We're not talking about just selling somebody on a product that they're going to be done with in 90 days. Like we're actually talking about helping them grow their business. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably one of the hardest things to relay. It, it really is, but it really makes all the difference. Um, I, have, I have one client where we, we just crossed the year mark in August. And wow. so in the year, year like span that we... Yeah, it, it, it was big. And so in the year span, um, in terms of commission that I generated for her, it was about $150,000 directly related to the ads we were running. Mm -hmm. So you know, awesome. she was able to go to South America and was able to do all these trips for right. kids during the summer. And like, I mean, it really changed her lifestyle. And so, you know, the marketing stuff we do is great. But, you know, being able to actually change people's lifestyles, change how they're, you know, feeding their family, whatever, you know, things that they're doing. I mean, it, you know, it's really big for, you know, for the business. And so when I'm pitching my clients now, I'm telling them we're trying to build a relationship. I'm not trying to just be here for one month, two months, three months and be gone. I'm trying to build a relationship with you, help change your lifestyle and help, you know, reach every goal that you have on your list. No, that's great. That is great. And I think that's something that a lot of agents or not a lot of agents, but a lot of marketers forget when we're getting on the phone with people. We're focused on selling. We're not focused on building that relationship and providing the value that's going to change that agent's business and potentially their life. And one of the things that I found is that's really what it's all about, just because, you know, with real estate agents, they're always looking for the next shiny new object. So, you know, one or two two months with you, now they're looking like, oh, well, so-and-so said they can do this. Oh, look at this fancy chat bot. Look at this, that, and the other. Versus, if, you know, if you've already built that relationship and you're delivering the results you promised, they'll stay with you for the long term. Exactly. And, and Drew says... Part of it too, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Right. Part of it, too, is... Um, you know, trying to figure out what that motivation is, right? To and then and then helping them achieve their not just grow their business and and make them more money. It's it's bigger than that, right? And like you said, now you've got this client that can take these trips and spend more time with their kids and all that other stuff. That's what it's about. And a lot of agents, that's what they want. And, and you know, I, I think you figured out what that was, and you helped achieve that goal. Uh, which was, you know, essentially, well, obviously to make more revenue, but to eventually take more trips and, and whatever. Right. And so if you I, I think if you kind of build around that and and you can you know, you can find that motivation for those agents, uh, you can really help them out. And hopefully they're not going to replace you with the next, like you said, shiny object. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, Drew is asking, has anyone targeted other agents and brokers in Facebook ads to sell a property? So I'm guessing that would be something along the lines of, of trying to find another agent or broker who has a buyer for a listing that you're trying to sell. He said he tried it with a realtor per their recommendation, but she only put in less than 100. Is that so, something you've ever tried, Aaron? So that is not something that I've tried directly, but I guess you could say it's something that we've done indirectly. So, you know, you can run an ad for a listing and so you can run an ad for a listing and you can show it to everybody. But typically when uh when we're doing most of our ads, we'll actually exclude other agents because we don't want them to see it. And so when it's an ad for a listing specifically, we'll leave it wide open. That way any any and everybody can see it. So a real estate agent down the down the street can see it and they can tell you know tell their buyers or versus, you know, another a different campaign. So with that being said, really? you know You're yeah. leaving it completely open. You're not excluding real estate agents. Didn't say didn't say that completely. So okay. for, for, for for a listing specifically, if they say I need to get this listing, uh, this listing moved pretty quickly, we'll leave it open in that case. Normally, we exclude agents and every association and everything related to them. But they, okay. you know, in that case specifically, leave it open; they'll find it. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. No, that's awesome. Um, and you said you were using landing pages and lead forms. Are you leaning in a certain direction with those two? So I'm slowly getting to only lead forms. Mm -hmm. The landing pages that I have, we haven't touched them in months. They're just performing and we just keep it going. Well, how do you have that conversation with an agent? I mean, have you had an agent say something about the fact that, hey, you haven't changed our ads in, in months? And it So I've found that the clients that we have the most success with are the ones that are the most hands off. So when, okay. when we're talking to our clients, we're pitching it as this is a done for you service. You got a million and one things to worry about. You got contracts to get done. You got to show these houses. You got to do each every everything you got going on. So don't worry about this. We'll get the leads. As long as the leads are flowing in, they usually don't ask too many questions. And so, you know, we'll jump on a call maybe, you know, once, once, twice a month. 
just give them update, you know, answer any questions or concerns. But once you usually get past that first month, you know, I'll talk to my agents, you know, once, twice, every one or two months. So, yeah. So it's, it's one of those, you, you touch base with them as, as much as you need to, but it's most of the time, to. unless something's wrong, you are, uh, you guys are pretty hands off. When they're not calling, I know things are going good. Exactly. You know, <laughs> that is the funniest thing because I have noticed no, this is good news. Uh, the same thing with agents, and especially when I was on a team, like the guy who, who ran the team, who owned the team and whatnot, um, I wouldn't hear from him until something was going wrong, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. If nothing was going wrong, I didn't hear anything. And that's what he told me at one point. He says, yeah, if you don't hear from me, it means you're doing right. And so like, I go months without hearing from him. I'm like, oh, okay, well, things are good. <laughs> I, I literally have a client where we have not changed the ad in six months, and it's still generating 100 leads a month, and she's happy, I'm happy, and everybody's happy. Makes sense. Makes sense. Because it's all about the results, right? That's it. That's all I care about. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So let's go back to this first client thing. Um, and I guess I'm going to pull something from, from ClickFunnels, right? So I saw Russell put out his new his new uh, affiliate program or his new uh, 30days.com stuff. And he asked a bunch of people, you know, what would they do if they had to start over from scratch? Do we lose Shane? I think well, we lost Shane. All right. He'll be back. It's fine. No, uh, you, you didn't lose me. No, no. I just, two seconds. Me. I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back. Sounds good. So anyways, um, he asked a bunch of different people who were very successful what they would do if they lost their business entirely. They had no contacts. They had to start completely from scratch. And I'm curious, you know, if you had to start completely from scratch, knowing what you know now, having been through all of the stuff you've been through and, and picking up clients and generating new business, what would you do today? Do I have money? Did I lose my money too or did I just lose all my clients? Let's do both. All right. So if I lost all my money and I don't have a, a, a penny to my name, then uh, what is it? Thursday, yep. Sunday, I know there's going to be at least a dozen open houses in a five mile radius. And that starts at usually two to four. I got a two hour span. I'm going to make it to at least four or five of those. And if I make okay. it to four or five, I'm going to close at least one client. If I didn't lose all my money, then I'm going to the, the closest brokerage, whether it's Remax, whether it's Keller Williams, whether it's Exit Realty, whatever that particular brokerage is. I'm going to figure out you know, when their next event is. I'm going to sponsor a lunch. And uh, I'm gonna get you know two or three clients from that, and we're gonna start start again. Makes sense. So then let's go back. You didn't lose all your money, and you've got uh, a, a reasonable budget. Reasonable budget, we'll say. Right, right. So we got if we got a reasonable budget, actually, that's where when I would do do the sponsor luncheon because I've seen you know, that costs money, you know, buying lunch for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you know, added add into that, you know, LinkedIn's going pretty good. Uh, you can do some paid stuff on Facebook if you got if you have results to you know to back it up. If you, if not, then you know we'll keep that money in our pocket. And uh, like I said, we'll just buy lunch for as many brokerages in the town as possible. Well, I think we all have that question, right? So when you're paying money for Facebook ads to generate real estate agents as leads to to be in this service, uh, what does that look like? I mean, what are you seeing as far as your cost per acquisition, and is it really worth doing when you can go do these other things? Right, right. So when you can, when you're when you're first starting out and you're on a local level, focus on your local stuff. Once you've exhausted your local network, you know whether that's you know one or two cities, anything that's within driving distance, that's when you need to start doing the paid advertising, whether okay. it's on Facebook, whether it's on LinkedIn. But if you haven't exhausted your local, you know your local resources, you, if you haven't got at least three in your current city and two or three in the surrounding cities, then you know you, you need to you need to hunt more. <laughs> that makes sense. M more hunting, less gathering. And that's it. Dude, <laughs> that I, I just gotta say, if I lost everything tomorrow, I'd quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be done, man. <laughs> that's niche. I work. I work Go so back to chiropractors. <laughs> right. Find me a dentist. Yeah. Find me a dentist. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. No, we have uh, quite a few questions here. And again, if you guys are watching live, hashtag live in the comments, hashtag replay. If you're watching the replay. Let's go through some of these questions real quick. Shane, you want to read some of these off? or? Yeah, I think my video is kind of choppy, actually. No you worries. Guys... I'll read them off. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So what I'm kind of Austin landing page read with ClickFunnels? <laughs> I'm actually, sorry, yeah. say again? Uh, Austin, we'll have you read them off after this one, which is what kind of landing pages do you use uh, with ClickFunnels? I guess more describe the landing page. Homes list, listings, you know, what are you doing with them? So pretty much no matter what kind of landing page I'm doing with ClickFunnels, aside from maybe a seminar, um, just get you a nice picture of a picture of a nice home in the background and then put your get your three uh, three um, columns for name, email, phone number. 
The Holy Trinity. <laughs> the Holy Trinity, and then add whatever text is about you know related to the air. Makes sense. Makes but sense. They, they 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 almost always look the same. They're 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 nothing fancy. I've tried fancy fancy landing pages. They don't convert as well. Keep it simple. Makes sense. All right, Austin, you want to go through these? Yeah. Okay, where we at? Hey, Shane. I think we lost Shane. <laughs> no, I'm here. I'm. Here. It's my camera's messed up, man. <laughs> ah, sorry. no worries. It's doing you a favor. We'll, we'll carry on. <laughs> oh yeah, what are you charging? That's a good question. Everybody here? You care to I'm answer? Also going too. Oh, and I leave? What the heck? I'm on mine. All right, we see you. You are, am I the only one you see right now, Aaron? Yeah, I didn't see you. <laughs> okay. Well, the? then we're uh, we're going over. What are you charging currently? So currently, we charge anywhere from fifteen hundred to four thousand. Okay. Uh, and what was the difference? Woo! Four thousand. Sorry. So dollars. <laughs> four thousand. So that that pretty much is uh so. 2500 is probably our standard, the, the, the average of what we're getting, but uh, we have a $1,500 package as well as a $4,000 package. And so the biggest difference really is the amount of leads. So we'll send 50 leads, 100 leads, or 200 leads. Okay. So are your packages based on lead size? They are based on lead size. Okay. And your $1,500 package was how many leads? So usually we can do 50 leads for about $1,500. Okay, 50 leads for $1,500. And your your big one now are the fifteen hundred dollar packages including ISAs? They do include ISAs. Okay, that makes sense. So, and so Austin, one one of the reasons one. that we one of the reasons we can do that though is on average we're generating leads for one two three dollars, and so we can do it cost effectively. If you haven't quite got your targeting down or you can't generate leads that low volume, I definitely don't recommend it because you will lose money. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing is there's not as much margin as people think in this business. Right. <laughs> Especially once you start focusing on conversions. Right. So um, let's see here. Is Austin back on the screen for you? Uh, I don't. I see his box. I don't see his face. All right. No <laughs> worries. Let me fix him here. All right. So uh, Doug is asking, do you send reports with the stats? And if so, how often? So I have a template that I use, and I send it once. Oh, Austin's back. What's up, Austin? What up, guys? Ah, <laughs> uh, the joy to be live, man. <laughs> I know. Be so, live. Uh, so I have a template that I use um, that I send usually once a month. Okay. Usually, once you get past that first month, agents honestly don't even care about it. But uh, you know, if they ever request it, I send it, and then um, like I say once you get the past first past a few months, they don't care about it too much. But I do do it, and it's done once a month to answer the question. Now, here's another one from Ty. He says, so should all realtor trials be 90 days versus other industries, which are often run for just two weeks or 30 days? Trials? No way. If you're going to do a trial, do, do one 10 day. days. One day. <laughs> There's not one day. One day. One day. <laughs> well, the question is with trials, I think the, the bigger question there is, what are you setting as an expectation with a trial? Because that's going to determine your time frame, right? Certainly, certainly. So back when I would do trials, mm -hmm. I would set the, set the time frame for ten days max. Usually, you do ten dollars a day for you know ten days, and that's really all you need is, is a proof of concept. Because with the okay. trial, that's all we're doing. I'm going to show you that we can utilize Facebook, we can utilize Instagram to generate leads. And so at the end of ten days, I'm going to show you here's here are twenty new leads. Every okay. now and then you'll get a lead that's hot and ready. Other times you don't. But I'm not here to show you that in 10 days. You, even if I get you a lead today, it's going to take 45 days. And so there's no reason for me to do a 45-day trial for free. And that so without what, so, you know, just to wrap it up, 10 days is all you need to you know, show a proof of concept. And that's all you're looking to prove in 10 days or on a real estate trial. And yeah. I think that's key. You know, hashtag proof of concept. That's good proof. proof of concept, if you guys understand that. Like, because that is huge, right? So many people are like, we're going to get you deals within 10 days, right? But that's not it's the not, case. It's not happening. <laughs> no, absolutely not. And so if you're showing a proof of concept, and that's the ex expectation, yep. you're, you're setting both of you up for a win, right? Because they're going to see that it works. You're going to be able to show them that it works. And you're going to be able to continue on with a, a relationship that's going to actually generate business in the future. And it gets you paid a whole lot faster. You know, you wait 30 days, they're going to change their mind. Life happens. Their transmission on the car went out. Whatever it is, you're the first to go. Makes sense. So 10 days, proof of concept. Now you can get paid, and now we can really check it out. 
makes sense. And ig ignore the sirens. I, uh, I live near Detroit. It's consistent. Are you wearing a bulletproof vest there, Matt? <laughs> you know, that's why I wear the black shirts, man, because I can hide them easy. <laughs> so, no, we got more questions here. Uh, we got lots of questions coming in. I love it, guys. Keep the questions Keep coming. Keep coming. So, uh, do you guys take anything for the open houses, or do you just go and introduce yourself? Uh, so, no, I just go ask about the house, introduce myself, tell them who I am, find out more about them, do more, do more, ask more questions than you do, you know, tell them about yourself. And then, you know, they'll tell you, you know, I'm, I'm John Smith and yeah, this is a beautiful house and I've been in real estate for X number of years and yada, yada, yada. You know, they'll usually ask you, you know, what brings you out? Are you in the, you know, looking for, you know, looking for homes? And at that point you can tell them whatever you want to tell them. I'm looking for a home for me and my wife. I'm just, you know, daydream daydreaming, thinking about what I'm going to have soon. And then they'll ask you what you do and you let them know. You know, I generate leads for real estate agents like yourself, and now you got their attention. Right on. That's cool. Hey, let me ask a question about, uh, sorry, about the open houses. Are you, uh, man, my video is so bad. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> right, the sound is good, so you're golden. Yeah, okay, good, good. Um, are you picking, so when I used to, like, do the open house thing, uh, when I first started, I, I used to pick specific houses to go visit. Um, I also do the research on the agents, and I typically try to find specific agents, either team leaders or hoping that they would actually be at the house. Are you picking like specific homes to visit? Um, I always found like more expensive homes had less people showing up, so it give me more of an opportunity to you know visit or like basically speak to somebody. Are you doing anything like that, or were you doing anything like that? Oh yeah, definitely. So yeah, if, you, if, if you're going to take this concept, go to, to your oh. nicest neighborhoods, go to your nicest communities, whether it's a gated community or just an overall nice community overall. Drive by, see what, what, who has signs out, and then go to those specifically. Those are those are going to be the ones that have the money to pay you. You know, mm -hmm. if you're going to you know the middle of nowhere or right. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you're going to the you know the suburbs of Detroit, you're probably not going to find a client that's going to pay you money. <laughs> <laughs> you might not even have to find an open house if we're being honest. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. What are you Nobody talking about? There. Detroit is full of open houses, right? <laughs> you just walk into all the houses. <laughs> I've been there, man. <laughs> but yeah, so with that being said, yeah, the fight. Detroit's coming back. You're from, it, it's, they're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. But yeah, you know, with that being said, though, you know, you, you're familiar with your area or community. Just go to a nice community within your local city or local, you know, your local area and, you know, drive by on a Friday, on a Saturday, you'll see open house signs and, you know, just show up at that point. Makes sense. Makes sense. Now, let's see. We've got, hey, we already went over what do you charge for a month. Um, let's see. Drew wants to see a successful ad that's running on autopilot. Uh, with Live, we can't actually share screens right now. So that's we right. Might the feature <laughs> yeah it's one of the goofy features uh, <laughs> does the package include ad spend that's a great question so your 1500 to 4000 do those include ad spend typically typically they do but it also depends on the agent so when it comes down to pricing in general i'm in north carolina your average home price here is only $150,000 i got clients in california where the average home price is a million dollars so as you're approaching these clients, as you're figuring out, uh, you know, who it is you want to work with, you also figure out what your home price is. And so you can figure out what you can charge. So with that being said, you know, I charging four thousand dollars to the average agent here probably wouldn't happen versus charging four thousand dollars to the average, to a, a client I have in, in California. is almost a no brainer. So right. when you're trying to figure out how to price your agents, figure out the market, figure out, you know, what how much you're actually going to make on a deal close and then you can price them accordingly. That makes sense. That makes sense. And that accounts for your ISA cost as well, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. And now Doug says, so what is the ad spend for a trial? Um, before we get into that, what are your thoughts on trials? Because we went over what you would do if you're brand new. Would trials be included in there? And then if so, what would the ad spend be? So um, I definitely include trials. $300 trial, take $100 for myself, $200 to get results over 10 days, and boom, bada, boom. It makes sense. <laughs> That's very simple. <laughs> Keep it simple. Gustavo yeah. says, um, yes, so how to find agents that can pay? So I think that's a common uh, common objection that we run into is that people can't afford the service. Uh, how are you dealing with that? So pretty much how we're dealing with that is just adding value. Um, and I, 
we'll get agents who are, you know, been in the game for 20 years and doing a ton of volume who won't sign up because they don't, they don't see it because they're old school. I have agents who, you know, been in real estate for two months who see the value and they'll sign it right away. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, when you're talking to your agents, you're talking to these clients, add as much value as possible. Let them know I'm going to bring you, you know, X number of leads. I'm going to text them for you. I'm going to call them for you. I'm going to email them for you, whatever it is, figure out what their pain points are, add your value. And then the right ones will, will sign up for your service. Well, that you makes know, sense. Yeah, and the other thing too, I just want to add to this, um, is that just think of a lot, of, you know, when I think of all the marketers I've spoken to that have bought, you know, courses to try to figure out how to do something, but they were flat broke. They just ended up finding the money. And whether they put it on a credit card or they beg their, you know, friends and family for it or whatever, they bought that course, right? Yep. The same thing happens or the same thing can happen with real estate agents. Mm -hmm. You just need to show the value and you 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 have to present it in a way that makes them want your services and 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 makes them think that they that they actually need it in order to get to you know whatever wherever they want to get to, whatever those goals are, those guys will find the money. I mean that's absolutely that's, you know, like I mean, anybody so, else. Well, I mean, well, I mean when, when I you know how many cars I bought that I can't afford? <laughs> just <laughs> I found the money. <laughs> Uh, take a picture of your driver. We'll tell you. No. <laughs> no, but for real. I mean, when I first started in real estate, you know, I went months without a transaction, right? I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, but I hired a coach when I didn't have the money to hire a coach, right? Or I should say I didn't have the money to hire a coach and pay rent, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I hired a coach. You know, it's $1,000 a month when I hired a coach. And I got uh, four half-hour calls each month, Right. But I found the money, and because I did that, I was able to make six figures within, within my first 16 months as an agent, which again, the first six months, I made almost nothing because they didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> you know? So it, I say, so it's, it's about, again, that value and showing it because we're not peddling snake oil here, right? This is legitimate stuff that is going to bring legitimate business. I think part of the issue might be there's a bit of a stigma around, you know, Facebook leads, lead, you know, internet generated leads and things like that, that they just don't convert or they're shit or whatever. Right. And I think you just, you need to kind of <clears throat> get around that or at least present in a way that you're show you're a, you're capable of showing, you know, a positive ROI should, you know, the agents follow what you're telling them to do. Right. Exactly. And look, I mean, look at Aaron's numbers, what they're getting on conversion rates, because I'm very familiar with the different conversion rates in the industry. On average, online leads convert at 1.8%. On average with Zillow or Realtor.com, you're looking at 3.8%. Now, look at the difference in the cost. Okay, you're generating leads, I mean, at ridiculously low prices, right? Versus with Zillow, I think our average was about $72 a lead. Okay, so $72 a lead. So if we wanted four transactions, we had to spend, uh, I mean, what was that, $7,200, right? If we wanted that same four transactions from online leads, we're able to get that, I mean, gosh, with $1.50, let's say it was $5 lead cost, I mean, it's still dramatically lower than going to something like Zillow or Realtor.com. And I say dramatically lower because I'm not going to do math because... Uh, <laughs> But you can do the you're math. A math guy, buddy. You know that. I am a math guy, and I'm sitting here going, I can't do math right now. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the truth, right? Five, ten, even twenty-five dollars a lead, right? At twenty-five dollars a lead, you're still beating Zillow because you can buy two hundred leads for less than what it costs for a hundred leads to get those four closings. Definitely. You know, and a lot of people forget about that. You know, there it are stats out there that you can just show the agent and it makes sense. And especially with Aaron, what you're doing where you're handling the back end, right? So they only have to deal with clients that are interested in moving in the first place. That's it. They, at this point, our clients don't even make phone calls. You talk to the people who book an appointment. Exactly. Exactly. And not only that, but the 4% or the 3.8% technically with Zillow and realtor.com. That's what Zillow and realtor.com closes. It's not what the agents close because they are competing with the two six. to three other agents per lead. I found it to be six other agents per lead sometimes. It gets yeah. up there. Well, exactly. It depends on location. But imagine that. Like, yeah, Zillow's closing 3.8%, but if six leads are competing with that, or six agents are competing with that, they're barely going to be making 1% closings. 
right? Yeah. But if the potential is there with the with the home values, it still makes sense for them. So it's not that there aren't agents that won't pay. It's that we have to provide our value, like Aaron said. That's it. And we've got a bunch of questions here. Um, <laughs> <Not stopping. laughs> Austin, you ready to take questions? Yeah, I was always thinking about this. I know Aaron is one of those guys I kind of consider like one of the OGs, at least, you know, to have been through like Fave and which I know it's get clients or whatever now, but I still consider it Fave. You know, once Fave, always Fave. Right. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I was always, I was, I've always thought of Aaron as one of those guys who really has a good understanding. Aaron, I want to know how do you interact with your clients? That's one thing we haven't really talked as much about. And I know you said sometimes they never talk to you, but do you like, do you set a, a schedule of like, I'm going to call you once a week? I'm going to do a coaching call with you. Do you kind of onboard them on, on scripts to use? How do you approach your clients and how, what have you done to keep your clients on for, you know, some of them over a year now, like d give us uh, give us a couple, you know, two or three tips here on client management. Definitely. Definitely. So that first month, it, it re it's really key. So the first month we get a client, once we, you know, we start to add tomorrow, we're calling them every Friday. And so that first week we're just calling them, Hey, you know, Hey Johnny, you know, we got our campaign going, you know, we got a few leads going, you know, coming in just a heads up, man, to make sure you're calling these leads, make sure you're, you know, setting proper, you know, we're, make sure you're reaching out to them, make sure you're booking these appointments, calling appointments. And then we're kind of keeping that same process over the next, you know, over the next four weeks. That first month is really key just because, you know, you want to make, so I, I don't do contracts. I, you know, I, that's one of my pitches is, you know, we're going to, I, I want to earn your business each and every month. And so with that being the case, that first month or two is really key. So we'll, we'll coach them. We'll, you know, tell them what to, you know, what to do in terms of when their leads come in, what to expect, what kind of volume, how often you should reach out to them once they booked an appointment. And so, um, I guess with that being said, we're just, you know, staying on top of them, of talk, staying on top of them, and building build that relationship over that first month. Then I'll call, ask how the kids are doing, how's the wife? Did you call so and so? I saw you had a lead that came in for a five hundred k. Did you talk to them? How the conversation go? You know, and then they'll say, me, oh, so and so didn't show up for their appointment, or so and so showed up. We got them pre-approved today. So, you know, whatever it is, wherever that response is, I'm just staying on top of them usually for that first month. Uh, once we get to month two, it's a little bit less, not because, you know, because it has to be, but just because at that point they've kind of got, you know, they got it figured out and the trainer was off or the trainer was off. And so by the time we get to month three, we're probably talking, you know, once a month at, at, at most. But, you know, it's the key the key to keeping the clients on long term is just, you know, stay on top of them for that first month, answer any question they have, any concern they have, anything they're struggling with. Help them solve their problems. Keep adding that value, and you know, let them know you're a real person, just like they are, and they'll, you know, they'll stay happy and stay with you. Very cool. Makes sense. And now, awesome. with, sorry, I, guys, you gotta like hashtag Aaron is awesome or something because he, right. honestly, dude, you added so much value here to this call. Uh -huh. um, yeah, a lot of people on here. Uh, lots of questions. You know, I think a lot of people are are, are getting something out of this. Uh, you know, thanks. A, honestly, thanks a lot for all of this. Um, you, you've added a lot here. Absolutely. Really, really appreciate it. I'm sure the, the viewers are appreciating it as well. Oh, yeah. It's really my pleasure. And like I said, um, I'm, I'm 26 years old. And so the last two what? years, I, I, <laughs> it's crazy. I, that's it. <laughs> I feel so <laughs> old. Man. I've been fired so many times. It makes no sense. But, you know, every, every time I got fired, I was like, OK, well, why did so and so fire me? All right, well, why did this person fire me? And so, you know, with that being said, we figured out what works and what doesn't work. And so when you're bringing your clients, you know, the relationship part is, is, is so important. So, you know, we're calling, we're touching base, we're figuring out what those, those pain points are. When I first started, we would generate leads and we'd hide behind a computer and cross our fingers that they wouldn't call us. Now we're calling them. Just because you want to make sure that you're building that relationship and they want to, you know, oh, that's Aaron, that's, you know, that's, that's my guy. You know, you want to be their marketing guy. And right. so if, if you're the right. marketing guy, they'll keep paying your invoices. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. And I'm curious, um, are you able to provide special scripts for your uh, inside sales agents or do they already have the scripts already and you didn't have to train them at all? So the, the ISAs that we use currently, so we, we've done the scripts and we've tried doing the virtual assistant didn't work out so good. So the ones that we're currently using, they have scripts and they're, they, they know the game. Perfect. Perfect. Now, Doug is asking, are you running the trials out of your account since they're paying you? Or are you running those accounts out of your business account? 
So I have 800 ad accounts for Facebook. So each time we get a client, whether they're a trial or non-trial, we'll set up a new ad account for that particular client, and then we'll run it out of ours directly. You're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> okay. And are you charging the client up front for the ad spend, or are you just attaching their card to the new account? Uh, it depends on the client. If they're they're finicky about you know giving their credit card information, then I'll bill them and I'll do it that way. If they're mm -hmm. if they're not, then you know I'll I'll put their card on file. Okay. And Brock says. Uh, when you deliver your leads with the ISA, what are the expectations from the client's perspective? For example, 50 leads for $1,500. These leads you have, uh, you have followed up on. Are you setting appointments, then delivering the leads to your clients, or are you following up with the leads uh, to get additional information like time frame, looking to buy, credit score, job, et cetera, and then delivering the clients or delivering the leads to your clients? What does that look like? Give me two seconds. Computer just gave me another notice. Hang tight. No worries. No worries. Um, Mike is asking, how does the ISA process look? That'll probably be answered in the other question. Uh, he says, does their outreach prompt the leads to schedule appointments on the realtor's calendars? So Mike, most of the time when, uh, when I've used ISAs in the past, and I think Shane, you can probably attest to this is typically the ISAs are going to schedule leads for either a callback or for an in-person appointment. It really depends on who you're using for your inside sales agents. All right, I'm back to party. Sorry about that, fellas. Perfect. Hey, uh, uh, how you guys all doing with your drinks? How's it? Yeah, uh, good. yeah. How's your tea there, Austin? We're, Austin. we're almost to the bottom, yeah. so we'll keep I, it going. I finished mine. <laughs> you finished yours. Bottoms up, boys. All done. Bottoms up. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And by the way, you guys, let us know what you're drinking in the comments below. We're curious. We're always looking for new whiskeys. Typically, every, uh, all, our, all our viewers, they always drink water, man. Whiskey they're like, no, no, no. Uh, we've got a notebook and a bottle of water. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, put a photo of what you're drinking. <laughs> yeah, put a photo of what you're drinking. There we go. Good call, Austin. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so going back to Brock, though, now, when you deliver your leads with the ISA, Right. What are your expectations from the client's perspective? For example, 50 leads for $1,500. Well, these leads, you know, you've followed up on, are you setting appointments and then delivering the leads to your clients? Or are you following up with the leads to get additional information like time frame, looking to buy, credit score, et cetera, and then delivering that to your client? What does that look like? So if we deliver 50 leads to a client, usually on average, you know, every mark, every mark is not the same, but on average, if we're, if we're delivering 50 leads, usually anywhere from 10 to 20 of those leads are booking appointments. And then once that appointment is booked, you know, at that 10 to 20 appointments that were booked, you'll get one or two of those that are converting and are ready to go in the ne that next 45 days. Just meaning they have the mindset, they have the credit score, they have the, you know, the cash on hand for, for a is down payment. Is an appointment an in-office appointment on the calendar or is it a callback? So it is a callback, and then from from there, um, we're coaching our clients to once you get them on the phone, a lot of clients try to push them directly to the loan officer, and so we we found a higher conversion rate is if you get them to get an in house and in house appointment. Absolutely, so that's, you get the loan officer so on the phone when you get there. <laughs> exactly, and so that's what that's what I tell all my clients to do. Once once we book an appointment with you on your calendar, talk to them and uh, you know fill out their pain points, answer their questions, and then get them to come in house meet you in person. Let them know you're not just some face behind our computer screen. That makes sense. Uh, Mike is asking, how does the ISA process look? Uh, does their outreach prompt the leads to schedule an appointment on the calendar or on the realtor's calendar? Well, I think we just answered that one. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, we're we're caught up on questions. <laughs> All right, we're caught up on questions. We're caught up on questions. You guys have another question? Drop them below fast. Yeah, yeah, because we're we're gonna end it. We're gonna have to end this here soon. Um, it's been over an hour. We've gotten a ton of value here from Aaron. Uh, it's uh, it's been awesome. I have one question. Is uh, something we brought up when we first started this? I think we all um, get one question, right? Austin, you and I, we all get one question. My video sucks. Hang on a second, guys. <laughs> Austin, do you get that? We all get one question. I thought I just asked one, no? Yeah, Austin asked one. All right, perfect, perfect. So <laughs> the only one get I'm, I'm just going to think about my last one. <laughs> so um, you guys are just going to have to deal with my video story, guys. But um, uh, tell us what uh, – first of all, I want to talk about this one campaign that you run, which is the buyer's event and what that looks like um, because I think – 
I think this is probably a, a decent campaign that you're running, and it's very um, different than what a lot of other people are are using. Um, I've seen it, uh, but maybe you can talk a little bit about how that looks. But before you do, I want people. I mean, before you even answer that, uh, so that's my first. That's the first thing. The second thing is I want to know what your best running campaign is. That's the my question. Um, but, but but before anybody answers that, I want people to comment. Um, Aaron is one of the best real estate <laughs> marketers out there. Um, so right. please comment, comment that down below. And if Aaron sees those comments popping up, I'm sure he'll answer um, that question. So you're gonna talk about your best performing campaign and we wanna talk about this buyer's event campaign that I know you run that is um, not too many people are running. So, um, but don't answer until people start commenting that because uh, <laughs> <All right. laughs> We, we know sure. what we can do with those, right? So, um, I, I know I've got my my personal questions, but I'll save those for uh, after we go offline. I want to make sure we ask enough questions that everybody else is interested in as well. Um, so, yeah, let's let's talk about that. Uh, are people commenting? You guys you got a comment? Aaron is number one. Okay, all right, we're starting to see it. Aaron, yeah, is we're starting to see it. Aaron is the man. Uh, we got uh, Aaron is the boss. Aaron is one of the best real estate marketers out there. After Shane, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Alex is one of my supporters here. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Um, Austin's the best RE marketer. Uh, good stuff, man. I think we got a bunch. of <laughs> Thanks, guys, for the support. I love it. I love it. So yeah, I want to hear about this because I I can't believe we completely forgot about that. Because <laughs> you're running some insane campaigns for was it first time home buyers? Is that right? We did some stuff for first time home buyers. We actually did we do a little bit for everybody. But uh yeah, one of one of my favorites is uh is is the seminars. Mm -hmm. And so just to kind of give you know, give a little bit more insight, you know, mo a lot of times when you're talking to your agents, just ask them, you know, have you done a seminar or have you considered doing one? Mm -hmm. A lot have, and they usually don't get a lot of transacts or traction from it. Mm -hmm. Others haven't done it at all. But um with with that being said, a lot of times what we'll do is, you know, after that first month with a client, after we've generated, you know, a pretty good audience, people have been seeing ads, people have been, you know, opting in, I like to tell our clients, let's do a seminar. And so that seminar, it is geared towards first time home buyers or people who haven't bought a home. But we're touching on all the pain points and so we'll put that in an ad copy. So, you know, whether that's down payment assistance, whether that's credit repair, you know, whether that's just learning about the home buying process in general, you know, we'll put all that into, you know, into some ad copy into a into an awesome ad. Other thing we do is we gotta have food because everybody likes to eat, right? right. So you know, refreshments to serve, breakfast to serve, dinner to serve, depending on what time of day you're doing it. And then we're getting all these leads or all these people that we've interacted with, and we're getting to show up into an actual event. And so we've actually had over ten people get pre-approved on site in an event just because we've had them all show up. Wow. That is awesome. And <laughs> wow. how much do you pay to to promote an event like that? Well, probably looking at anywhere from, you know, if, if you've already been doing advertise or ads for it on the client's behalf, you're getting leads, you know, you're almost retargeting essentially. So you're right. retargeting and you're getting leads for, you know, $5. You're getting cold leads for 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. And so we will pack a house for, you know, about a hundred, we get a hundred people to, to sign up. We'll get about a 50% show up rate. We'll get 50 people to show up in house and you'll get 10, 20 people, you know, applying for a loan and you'll get, you know, nine, 10 people getting qualified. Well, I think something very important there is you just said you're getting 10, 20 people applying for a loan. Now a real estate agent cannot do that for someone. So are your real estate agents partnering with a lender? So anybody in the real estate niche, if you want to help someone, uh, if they want to help somebody buy a house, they have to get approved from a loan nine out of 10 times unless they're a cash buyer. So with that being the case, most agents have a preferred lender. Mm -hmm. They usually invite them to the seminars. Um, I tell my agents, if you haven't already, connect with a credit repair person. I have some that we actually even connect with. And so we'll have all these people show up to an event. So now you show up to this event, you're going to get fed, you're going to learn how to buy a house. You're going to apply for a loan. If you don't qualify, no biggie. We got our credit repair person on site who can help you. We got a loan person who can help you. And then we have the, the agent there to help you. And so once you're pre-approved, they can start you on the home buying process. And so, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a pretty cool concept. And like I said, uh, if you've you already been doing ads and you already have a pretty cool audience, these people are ready to see you in person. You know, that's one of the awesome. things that I pitched to my agents is, you know, you're the local rock star in, in that marketplace. They've been seeing your ads. They've been seeing your face all over, you know, Facebook and Instagram and everywhere else. Now you're giving them an opportunity to see you in person. That, so, is, yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. And that's so you awesome. said you'd spend probably about 10 bucks uh, to get someone to show up or about 20, I guess, 20 bucks if you're paying about 10 bucks to get a lead through that event. 
and a fifty percent show rate. That's pretty solid. So twenty bucks. That's um, that means around a hundred bucks or so to get uh, a pre-approved loan, right? Right. So they're spending a thousand dollars with you. They're getting fifty people to show up to this event. Well, they're probably spending more than a thousand because they have to pay for the food, right? So maybe twelve right. fifty, you know, fifteen hundred at most. But still, fifteen hundred bucks. Like if you got one deal from that. You just won. It pays for black. itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. That is that is awesome. So tell us, uh, what's your ad copy? What's the picture? What's the targeting? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but, but what, what what details can you release on this that is working so well for you, or that are working so well for you? So it actually works really well for me, but I'm actually giving away the whole funnel, the ad copy, the targeting, all that good stuff in my targeting hex guide. So just a little plug there. Okay. All right. I like it. I like it. That's it's cool, man. Guys, I'll be sure to look for it on IamWarriorTools.com. <laughs> <laughs> guys, it's okay. If you're in this group, don't worry. I've already, I'm buying it from him, and uh, we'll just share it here. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Right? You know, free access to. <laughs> but yeah, hey, I, no, no worries on the shameless plugs. Tell us about the. Uh, just tell us a little bit about it. What uh, What can people expect out of this? You've offered so much value here. Yeah, uh, to, to us and to our group. Uh, this has been an awesome call. Uh, go ahead and take a minute or so and just talk about what you got and what um, uh, what this uh, this hack thing is, the targeting hack. Definitely, definitely. So everybody knows Facebook has made changes to their, you know, their their algorithm and what's allowed for targeting. And so they haven't had that hasn't affected us not even the slightest a bit. So we got targeting hacks available to help you find buyer leads, seller leads and everywhere in between. Mm -hmm. um, and also included with these targeting hacks are my five best. Actually, correct that six best funnels. So we got uh, home buyer leads, we got first time buyer leads, we got our seminars, we got uh, seller guides, we got everything that, that I use personally for our agency to generate results for our clients. Wow. So if you, if you have a client or wow. if you are working on a trial client, we got a targeting hacks that'll help you generate results and kick ass the first, you know, the first 10 days and, you know, get paid from it. And you're going to put a link to that in the comments below, right? Yeah, guys, if you I'll put, I'll put the link in the comments below. There's a one-time right. offer, right? 50% off tonight only. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, so guys, oh, hashtag, uh, what we, we got a hashtag for that? Uh, hashtag Target Hacks. hacks. Aaron Hacks. Aaron Hacks. Aaron, 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 Whiskey, Aaron Whiskey Hacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure you've already given away some of the secrets from that, but I, I, I just can't imagine what's in there. Like, from what you've talked about, like, there's so many details that if anybody is not familiar with what goes into this, like, there's so many details that are missing. Like, I just can't imagine what's in that, that program. So we'll have to talk offline on that. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. And one of the other cool things about it, too, is not only where we even get the ad copy, what if you, if you use ClickFunnels, we're sharing the funnels with you. If you lose, use lead forms, we're giving you the ad copy. Just copy and paste it, plug and play, and you're ready to go. Oh, dang. Wow. Talk about done for you. <laughs> done for you. Just like now, we do Joe, for our clients. Joe brought up a great question. Could you split the cost with a lender and the credit repair person so that instead of the agent paying Fifteen hundred for this whole thing. The agent's paying, you know, five hundred. The lender's paying five hundred. The credit repair person's five hundred. So when I get on a call with any agent, the first thing that I say once we get to the price, and that's the biggest objection that most agents tend to have, is who's going to service these loans that you have. And so with that being the case, I'm telling each and every one of them to talk to your lender, ask them to spit the cost for you if you can't afford it. And over Absolutely. half of them are doing that. You know, because what what happens if, if I send you hundred leads? If I send you hundred leads. And, you know, three or four of them are ready to go. The first thing you're going to do is pick up the phone and call Johnny, your loan officer, and he's going to run those loans and he's going to get paid for it. So, you know, if that's the case, then make him pay you to, you know, run these ads. And so Absolutely. that's one of the things that we've done to help, you know, get paid. And, you know, you start asking people for four or $5,000, sometimes they need a little help to do it. And so, you know, definitely don't be afraid to suggest that to your clients. So actually, you know, probably give you a handshake. Like, oh, that's a great idea. Right? I love that. I'll tell you what, I'm <laughs> drinking. So I'm going to post that video, Shane. If that's okay with you, I'm gonna post that video. Sure. Uh, yeah. About how to get a lender to pay for your pay for your ad spent. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so not only is, are Aaron's uh, targeting hacks available tonight, but I'm gonna post that video in there so you can close more clients with his targeting hacks and make more money doing this all together. Good stuff. Cool guys. I like that. Yeah. Awesome night, man. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Aaron, stick around. Uh, Shane, go ahead and close us out. <laughs> Guys, thanks a lot, everybody here. Huge thank you to uh, Aaron for joining us tonight. 
Um, this has been awesome. Uh, we've had a ton of engagement here. I think you've added a ton of value to this live tonight, uh, to our Whiskey uh, Thursday. Um, and uh, guys, make sure to, uh, I think we're going to blow up your DM here tonight. <laughs> I know. <laughs> gonna, yeah, I was thinking about this. Like, Aaron's going to get a bunch of, a whole new batch of friends tonight. <laughs> so, That's all right. You know, if yeah. you buy the if you buy the targeting hacks, I'm sure he'll talk to you. <laughs> You're gonna get the <laughs> That's right. So. <laughs> uh, but Aaron, honestly, um, I'm a big fan of yours, and uh, thanks so much for um, popping in on our Whiskey Thursday again, where we get our guests drunk and they uh, hopefully share their secrets. And I think you've done that tonight, which has been I I've given away too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this bottle's almost gone, huh? Oh, boy. <laughs> so, uh, okay, guys, uh, we're going to end this live here. Um, Aaron, Matt, Austin, thanks a lot for uh, popping on. Hold tight oh. because uh, we have an after party after this, and um, just the four of us. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> guys, everybody that's been watching, um, all your comments, all the engagement, all the likes, thank you so much. Um, again, if you've uh, gotten any value out of this, um, hashtag well, value yeah. in the comments below. That's right. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. Have a great night. Take it easy. Good yeah. night. Stick around.